for instance you see this box here i have is a box about uh, something hallelujah and uh yeah the microphone i'm using here i bought it here amen now in this book it came with some stuff inside you know it came with this paper you know this paper is giving us the instruction and it came with all the things that you see here the covers for the microphone its cover the wires the everything amen now this box did not come empty this is what i call potential you are this box you see potential is now this that we're bringing from this box it came with uh, all this stuff you know this cable come if 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 this cable does not if the cable that is there does not fit on there um, they, they provide already another cable you see this you see this they provide you see this it's already provision they provide many stuff here they provide if i want to amplify my sound uh this the cover i can put there but i don't want to put it there because somebody might say oh what are you putting there i mean it came with the box it came with all these things you know so all this is what i call potential potential is what god's put already in you you see is the things that god sent you with on the earth when he was creating you he put things in you you see god before he created man he put diamond gold silver what what uh copper everything under the ground the clothes amen now when we are born we have to find those diamonds that's the, our fight is to find because nobody is telling us where they are you see we have to find the country that find what god put it in their land are oh, they are blessed you know some other they don't know what god put in their land they're still in reception you know now god put many things in the land and he closed it so it's our job is to find what god put uh, under the ground here you know so the same as a human being god put what we call potential is the capacity that put things in you those things that will help you to to succeed those things that will help you to to make an impact when you come in the world but what do we do most of the time we don't know we don't know what god put in inside of us that's that's the the, the failure failure is not what you find on the earth failure is not the people you find failure is not the other guy the other guy the other guy no failure is based by your ignorance that's what the bible says. my people perish by lack of uh, knowledge you see now the bible says that does not say my people perish because of this uh of what and but it say my people perish because of lack of knowledge when you lack the knowledge is a, is a word but it includes many things so basically when you lack to understand what god has put inside of you is a number one uh, cause of failure you see so now first key into uh how to to position yourself you are you must know your potential once you know your potential i mean if you know what god put in you what he gave you as capacity what he gave you as strength what he gave you as ability i am telling you right now if you know what you were born with if you know who you are you know if you know what god chose you for why you were created for you are already on the list of winners you are already on the list you are already on the list hallelujah oh my god tonight is tonight something is going to change now number two is find your place once you find because gideon was saying oh who am i the angel say mighty warrior because the angel can see what is in gideon but gideon did not see and he was saying oh who am i so our problem is we have to pray to god and say open my eyes i want to know myself you see we try to know the other guy we try to know the other guy we try to know many people in the world but the only guy we don't want we don't want to try to know is yourself but your power is in you but you are studying the other guy you are studying the other guy <laughs> you will never become like the other guy because you are you him is him so i want to tell you right now you have what you came with what you were born with 
and the other guy that you are trying to study day and night to watch him what he's doing he also have what he was born with so don't waste your time studying him study yourself learn yourself know yourself i'm telling you key number one number two find your place find your place because if you find your place you see it's not because you have a potential that you must succeed no 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 let's look to the life of abraham i don't have time to read i want i like when i talk i talk fast that that way god used me better than stand stopping reading stopping reading is not my style so i like talking like this because that's how i feel god is using me amen so uh god says to abraham you see leave the place that has put you and go to a place i will show you it doesn't say the place now that place is not like you walk down the road you get it you know it is going and going and going i was actually watching a, a movie of abraham this was the best movie of abraham i ever seen before you know and uh they they really did what is written in the bible wait by wait you know and it was just going and the people asking him where are we going he said i don't know you see so the thing is you have what they call a uh, place your your potential cannot work everywhere it have a place where it must work now the fight we are having again in life is the fight of knowing the place where we must operate from you see even as you see people traveling from one country to another country some of them it is adventure that's why they travel even to bigger country they still don't succeed some of them it is the will of the father god is behind it god wanted them to travel that's why they can succeed in the, even in the foreign land because god planted them there there is what they call a place your land your territory there is a power a lot of power when you you are in your territory you know to attack somebody in his own house is not easier because he knows where everything is you see so to to attack somebody who sit in his own territory it's not easier you see because he knows where everything is he knows where to hide where to do what you know so the thing i'm trying to tell you right now find your place you if you know who you are you know who you are it is not enough many people know who they are and they stop where they are you see they just know i am this i'm that but i want to tell you right now the next step is find your place finding your place it involves god i remember where i started my ministry here in cape town in sea point a couple of years ago you know first time when i came to cape town i passed there in that area i went in different area but when i went in c point my heart you know enjoy you know when they, they, they say uh uh mary went to visit elizabeth and the two children jump in the womb so i felt something jumping me when i got in that area where my, my church gonna start but in that moment i was not in a position to do anything anything not even dreaming about it you know and so i'm telling you but i just felt like there is something in this area of mine but i don't know what it is you know and we uh, somebody we were driving in that area with somebody we passed by a certain building i see a massive building somewhere there and as i just dream myself having a crusade in that place but all those dreams in my head were impossible you know but something i just sense it you know when you find your place you will sense it when you find your death, your place god wants you to be you will sense it if you are in an area where you feel like unhappiness you are this and that is not god doesn't want you the place where god wants you you will feel peace you feel comfortable now uh, i think uh a year later god opened a door for me to go start church in that uh, in that place hallelujah I went in that place. I love the place. When I'm evangelizing there, I went. People, I'm, I'm telling you, many people did not go there to start the church, you know. And people were like, oh, are you really going in this area? Yes, it's a beautiful area, you know. But, you know, 
where is is a rich area, beautiful area, but also more sin. I mean, sin, 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 sin. And we 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 have to evangelize many people in different ways to start the church, to start the ministry. And I want to tell you right now that. And I end up doing a crusade one day in that building that I saw when I was passing uh, two years ago in that uh, same place. And I, I, it was about uh, 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 five years later, I end up doing that crusade in that venue, you see. So the thing is, there is certain place that when you go there, you just sense that there is something of yours. God wants you a specific place, even Abraham. God sent him in the Canaan land, but he did not give him a place to put his head or to stay there. That was for later. So he had first to get a offspring, and then after that his offspring had to go to Egypt 400 years, and then coming back, it was a few other centuries back that, that God gave uh, the children of Israel that land. So today, I want to encourage you, people of God, beloved, I want to encourage you. I want to say to you that you have to know that uh, uh, you have to know the grace of God, the land God gives you, the place where God you. You don't give yourself a place. You are not moving to the place where you like to move, you know. You are not going to... Even renting a house, even buying a house, you are not buying a house in the area because this is what you can afford. You are not, you are not renting a house in the area because this is what you're going to afford. No, it doesn't work like that because there are certain areas when you go there, you will never succeed in your life. So basically, you have to pray. Even you know that this is the area I want to be. And those are not opening for you. You have to pray. You have to pray God to open a door in that area. You know. So I started my church there. And it's a place God gave me, you see. And uh, many people were like, ah, are you having a church? He said, yes, yes. It's a tough area. You don't, you know, they, you know I went to many other areas, these churches, but they just... Maybe two, three, four. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's tough, but we wait. We were taught to be there. The grace was there. We, we sense it. We saw it. That's what potential is. You see, God plus plants you. When God plants you in a place, I'm telling you, nobody can push you down. You see, those are going to open. You see, so the thing is, we don't move from one land to another without involving God. That is already a problem. We don't move from one area to another, even uh, in our life, our ministry, without involving God. It is a problem. When you see people traveling from this country to this country to preach the gospel, leave them alone because God is with them. Maybe when you try, it's not going to work. So, Maybe God wants you to stay in one place and take the land in the, with the gospel. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you right now, number three, discover your time. If you know your potential, you know what you were created for. You know your place. You know, you know that this is my town. This is my area. Hallelujah. I'm in the place where God wanted me to be. Hallelujah. You know? When you're in a place where God wanted you to be, one of the things you're going to have is hallelujah. You're just going to be happy. You like the place. Now, that is not enough. The next step is going to be discover your timing. Your timing is very, very important. Your timing is very, very important. The Bible says in John chapter 2 that Jesus' mother asked Jesus to say, Jesus, oh Jesus, the wine is finished. Can you do some miracle? Jesus said, it's not my time. He did it anyway because uh, he was obedient child. But it was not his time. Why? Because the time, so if Jesus started that way, the devil could take advantage. The devil could, the, the devil could stop him. The devil could, could stop him, you know, if, uh, the devil could stop him if, if it just started like that, you see. But what happened is, 
it first started by uh, it, it first started by prayer, you know. So that uh, the mother asking him, Jesus, can you do the miracle? That was just to say that Jesus was not well positioned yet because he had to take control of the area. He had to take control of the place. He had to, to take dominion over the spirit that controlled the earth because his mission was to overcome those evil and to, to overcome those evil and to, to win the world for God. So now, when they say start a miracle, it was almost like a temptation for Jesus Christ. Because Jesus had to start in prayer. First conquer the one who was ruling the world with the devil. Then go and do the miracle. So, but that miracle that came, it was also like a temptation. So that he can just see, oh, I can do miracle and he start doing it. That's why people that are in the churches, if God use you one day, it's not mean jumping it, you see? If you are not a man of God, that it does not mean God cannot use you. Using you for God, you don't have to be a man of God, you see? To be a man of God, is a, it is a level. It is a capacity to help other people. To be a man of God means there is things you have understood. There is things you have gone through. There is exams. You have written in the Lord, where you have cried in the Lord. You have you've learned things. You've been around people in the Lord. You have seen things. That's what the person we call man of God. But it does not mean for you for God to use you. You must be man of God. I prayed for people that some some people uh, somebody was dead. I prayed God use him. I see miracle were happening with me. I was a brother in the church, not even a leader of anything in the church. So God was already using me in miracles and signs and wonder, healing miracles. I was, it has happening, you know, we go to hospital, wherever place. But I want to tell you right now, that was not man of God. I was, I was not even leader of anything. So for God to use you, you don't have to become, uh, you don't have to be, when God is using you, it's not mean because you are man of God. Yo, no. God use you because of the gift, not because of the man of God. The man of God is the capacity. It is a level that you have reached in the spirit. The level to teach others. You understand? Now, discover your timing. So, if God use you today, but there is a time, what we call the time of God. So, you, you will get, if you are a pastor leading a church, you will get a lot of uh, problem with the people. Uh, the younger people, because God use him, and then he say, uh, he want to take over. He, he feel like the pastor here preach himself every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. This pastor is a is selfish, you know what I mean. And so I want to tell you right now, if you are a child, God is using uh, powerfully. Your pastor is not selfish. There is you must understand certain things that you have to reach a certain level because there's other other things that when you do them in a in a time that is not yours, the devil will block you. He has that power. So Jesus could not start miracles, just come and start miracles. He had to go face, conquer the enemy in the desert, 40 days, 40 nights. When he finished conquering the enemy in the desert, you see that the enemy came three times. He conquered. Then Jesus went to do the miracles. You see what I mean? So the time is important. You know, when we were growing up, God was using us we were Kids, we were kids. God was already using us. More than, I remember God was using me and other young kids. More than the pastors. They're more than our pastors, you know. And sometimes we were laughing at our pastors. You look at the pastor. Amen. He could not even do, uh, pray for the sick or whatever. You understand? So I want to tell you right now that, but even God was using us. Even God was using us because we were praying more than the pastors who were leading us. But that did not make us men of God, you see. I want to tell you right now, we, were, we waited years and years to become a man of God, you see. So I want to tell you that no matter what you discover, no matter you find the place, 
the time is also there. The promise of God comes with time, you see. God does not give you everything in one day. He gives you step by step. So you need to understand this notion of time. Time is very, very important. When your time comes, even you say, no, 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 I don't want it, I don't want it. God will put you in it. Sometimes we sit and say, ah, you look at your church and say, ah, when is God going to use me? You know, The pastor is preaching himself every Sunday. We got people who have ministry, they have calling, and they worry. They say, the pastor is preaching every Sunday. When is God going to use me? <laughs> that is not the problem. When your time comes, <laughs> God will do something. God will do something. <laughs> We've crossed that level. We also ask ourselves those questions. I want to tell you right now. It's a problem of time. If, if you have a calling, you have a powerful what? Gift. Powerful. God can use you in prophecy. God can do this with you. God can do. There's no room. Mm -mm. It's not the past. It's the problem of the time. When the time arrives, God will create the room. When the time came, God moved other people. You know? I remember we used to have a cell group, and the cell group was at my house. And But I was not leading it. I was not even doing anything because I was a young believer. You know? And I start growing. Hallelujah. I start growing step by step, step by step. When the time arrived, God moved the leader of a cell group. And he moved the, the person who's supposed to be the second. And he moved the person who's supposed to be the third. He moved them, all of them, in a one week. You see? And there were no other guy that can lead beside me. I became available to lead. Hallelujah. That's what we call the time of God. When the time of God comes, you don't have to be fighting, trying to organize your own ministry. How is going to work? How you can... You see, even connection is good. But really, if God is not there, it's not going to work. You want to know people for free, you see. And I want to tell you right now. It's all about God. It's all about God. It's not about how many people I know. Oh, you are invited because you know. How many people know how many people? And how many people are getting invited? How many people are preaching? You see, it's not about how many people you know. It's not about how many people connection you have. It's not a connection. It is God. If God wants you to go and preach, you know, we went to preach some other place. People don't know me. I don't know them. You see, sometimes I don't even talk their language. You see, but we preach. You understand? So I'm telling you right now that it's not about who knows you, who doesn't know you, how many people must I know, how many network I must be so that I can be known. So what? No, no, no. That is in the flesh. Is the understanding as a human being. But you must live that kind of understanding. You must understand now things in the spirit because you are men of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, men of God, Colony. God bless you, Colony. Men of God, my friend, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So when time comes, God is going to use you himself. The, the waiting time is a very, very complicated time. But I want to tell you a secret. When we go to the bank, we even we are rushing, even we have very little time. But there is people in front of us, you see. Now, the problem is there is nothing you're going to do about it. You cannot jump them. You cannot do anything. You just wait. You will just wait. Maybe your thing is just to ask a question to the bank or just to do a deposit but th there's many people you know now the secret is every time somebody goes in front they help him i get happy wow praise god the queue is what moving hallelujah the next person go i get happy the next person get go the i get happy i get happy oh the next one is me you understand so every time god elevates somebody of your generation somebody you grow up with, you must clap hands. You must be happy because the queue is moving. It means you are closer. Whatever you used to see far away on TV, on a, whatever, is among you guys ever reach your generation. That is the secret. When you see somebody you grow up with, they make a step forward. 
or you never make a step forward, or somebody just you know, you see, uh, God has done for them this day, this testimony, this testimony, clap hand. This is a lesson I learned when I was a, a, a young. I clap hand for everybody. Sometimes people come with blessing. You know, I have this gift of when people buy cars, they come to tell me, you see. And, uh, and uh, uh, many people have bought cars, and the, the first person they think about is to tell me because I like cars. You know, they come, pa, 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 I'm here, this is my car. I, I open and say, Oh my God, my God, praise the Lord, I'm gonna bless it, I'm gonna baptize it. <laughs> Everybody knows that I do that. So, <laughs> you know, I get happy for them, praise the Lord. I get happy for them because every time somebody make a breakthrough, you to mean you are the next your queue is moving amen so if the guy in front of the queue in the bank does not move you too cannot move but when two guys move i am becoming closer and my time is becoming closer hallelujah my time is becoming closer hallelujah my time is becoming closer hallelujah so my friend there is moving my brother there is moving my friend there bought a church my friend there my friend there my friend there hallelujah you know i remember when uh, i started when i was uh I started the church and then then i wanted to have a venue and i was like it was like i couldn't i didn't know where to get the venue you know one of my friends that was uh, behind me, you know, he came with a testimony how he got the venue. Ah! I said, oh my God, oh my God, this man got the venue. Hallelujah. What are we going to do now? Amen. But I, I, I went to his church and I, 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 you know, I said, show me the venue. And it was really a venue, you know. And I was just getting happy for him. Praise God. Oh, man of God. Oh, powerful. You know, by the time you know it, the following year, I got a bigger venue than him. You see what I mean? So I'm telling you right now, if somebody get blessed before you, don't make that a problem. You see, people who, who get angry because other person is blessed, they stay smaller in life. Never get yourself into that place of getting angry when somebody else is blessed. If your friend buy a house, be happy because the next one is you. The thing of buying a house, maybe you are seeing it far away. So if your friend can do it, it means that thing has reached your level, has reached among you. It is among you. You must be happy. Now, number four, uh, number one was discover your potential. Number two was find the place where your potential must work. It's a battle to find the place, you know. I always tell the people, don't go to area because this is where you can afford. No, you go to area where you feel like this is where my spirit responds with, I like this environment, amen. And so <clears throat> uh, discover your timing, you see, because you have everything in place, but the time depend now with God. So number four, I'm talking about focus uh, your call. Focus on your call. Focus on your call. You know, Isaiah said, there I am. God said, who can I send? Isaiah said, there I am, send me. You know, the thing is, you have to, to focus now. Once you know your thing and focus now, you see, let me tell you something. Go nowhere and listen to this. So what I'm trying to tell you right now is, Many people know themselves, many people, they know themselves. But the problem is they are not focused in what they know. You see, like I'm preaching now. Maybe you want to preach like me. Maybe it's not going to work. Maybe you don't know why I'm preaching. You understand? This is the thing. You see me preaching, but you don't know why I'm preaching. You see, you don't know the story. You don't know what is going on. You see, but maybe you want to do the same, you see. But we have different background, different stories that brought us to where we are. So basically, you cannot sit there and trying to be like somebody else. So we spend much of our time trying to be like somebody else when we're supposed to be who we are. So we know what we're supposed to be. And the next thing will be we have to, to focus on who we are. So when, when you know your calling, when you know what God has uh, told you you're going to be, when you know what your strength is, you must focus on your strength. Our eyes are everywhere. When your eyes is everywhere, 
it's a challenge to who you are because it gives you look look this is the other story we have in the in the in the uh, in the online thing you see in the network in the online thing because you sitting there you, you you have your own plan how you organize your thing then you see somebody also on facebook is doing a b c d and then you realize ah i also want to do that you see so now you leave what you are supposed to be doing to start doing what him is doing you see maybe when he's doing it he is well planned well organized maybe it is his time but you are trying to beat the record you want to try to compete with him so we have the cause of failure is uh, also um let's say Im 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 imitation you see imitating you know the thing is you are not supposed to imitate somebody but you can be inspired what is inspired it's like for instance what i'm doing and uh if you are not a preacher maybe you are some something else maybe you are a business person maybe you are a singer you know so you gonna do the video for your singing something like that you're gonna do maybe a video for your business maybe something like that that is is not a copy but it is inspire you are inspired you know to do something but that thing you are going to do will not look like mine it must look like yours you see what i mean so for instance i'm doing this this channel you are watching now it's called leadership platform you know now i'm dealing with leaders there is a story behind this god took me in a couple of years of training me you see when you see me put leadership it means i'm dealing with leader for me to deal with leader you know leaders are leaders they are not stupid they are not children you can't just come from i don't know where and say i want to talk to the leader i want to to do this with the leaders you know but god took me in some stuff and when i was going through those stuff i was like crying you understand now the things that i went through could only be solved if i understand the leadership in a higher level you understand so I, I spent a lot of money buying books on leadership and everything. I, fi I think I finished all of it. Amen. Now, the problem is I hit those things for a couple of years. I hit those things. The leadership, the management, the philosophy, the what, the what, the what. Because I was fighting something. And uh, when I was fighting something, I wanted to be a bigger leader for, in front of for that thing to fall but i did not know that god was leading was training me you see so now i find myself staying with all this understanding of different stuff now those things made me now to start what i call leadership platform now if you want to do leadership platform of yours because you see me doing it you want to do it my, my friend i don't know I don't know. You understand? So instead of lead doing leadership platform, uh, you start also inviting other pastor. You start inviting other pastor to listen to you, to follow you, to to discuss. Maybe you are wasting your time. Maybe you are in the stage where God wants to speak to the people in your own church. You see? Because I was in that stage for 16 years, you know? And then God put me in the position to speak to the leaders. But I've done my job for 16 years, you know. And uh, so maybe you're still in that stage. You leave the ship crying and you want to speak to the leaders. You understand? That's what I say. Imitation is dangerous. Because you see people, but you don't know the background. You don't know what level they are with God. You don't know what god taught them you don't know what timing is is there you see so the thing is get inspired but take that inspiration into your domain in what you are called to do in your thing that you are doing praise god this is a leadership at the leadership platform hallelujah amen if i tell you i've been in a serious training for this platform you you cannot believe me i'm telling you uh, God took me in a, in a serious training, like almost like, uh, I mean, maybe I think since, that, since 2012, you know, 
God took me in a serious training. I mean, serious training to be able to do what I'm doing. Amen. Because God does not just use whatever. You see, he takes whatever, but he clean it nice. It shine, then he use it. You see, we think God is just, uh, you know what, whatever is left. No, yes, you're right. He take whatever is left, but he clean it and he use it. Praise God. Uh, we're talking number six is avoid copying others. So that's what uh, I was saying now. Avoid to copy other people. Avoid to copy. You understand? Copy. Copy mean I take this, I put in the, the printer. Grrr, it come out. That's copy. Copy is take one minute. Oh, I mean not one minute, like seconds. But the original take years. Imagine you are copying master degree of somebody. You see? <laughs> But somebody suffered for it. Amen. So I want to tell you right now. Now I'm going to finish with uh, this part I'm talking.